So hello there everyone and welcome, it is Niran here and today it is time for me to bring you episode number 5 of our FIFA 19 Liverpool career mode series here on this channel. Once again a massive thank you to EA for making this one possible, this video is brought to you by EA Game Changers, grabbing you this early FIFA 19 career mode content. Now if you missed any of the series so far, there will be a link to the playlist in the top right of the screen, but the main thing to happen last episode right at the end was a big injury to Roberto Firmino, he's out for 4 months which will see him out for quite some time in this season and in this series because this is only going to be a one season series so at this point we certainly need a new striker Daniel Sturridge is only 80 rated we need to replace the 87 rated Bobby Firmino so we're going to have to take him out we're going to have to sell him or use him in a trade deal to bring in someone else so that's something to look forward to in this January transfer window special episode here on the channel first of all we've got some sim games coming up for you though uh, away from home against Manchester the City in the Premier League is always going to be a very difficult task and unfortunately it proves to be that way. A 2-1 loss in the end. Daniel Sturridge did get a goal but Leroy Sane and Kyle Walker with the ones that were in the end the vital ones for City to grab the win. Over in the FA Cup now on the 5th of January we're now facing Wigan Athletic. Ironically they've proven to be a bogey team for our previous opponents. Manchester City often losing at the hands of Wigan and we're hoping not to fall to a similar fate here in the FA Cup and Divock Origi is trying to make sure that we don't. He grabs the lead inside 40 minutes of the game. The likes of Shakiri, Zygankov, Awar, Pavard, Gomez playing in this one. Divock Origi though really wanting to make himself known. He's grabbed himself a brace in this one. A late goal from Walker for Wigan is not enough for them. And we beat the Latics 2-1 in the FA Cup to progress to the fourth round of the cup competition. Moving back into the Premier League a week later we've now got Brighton and Hove Albion. At this point we haven't done anything transfer related. We haven't sold anyone yet, apart from the players that we'd agreed to sell in the off-season, uh, including Nathaniel Klein, Lazar Markovic and Marko Grujic have now all left the club. We haven't signed anyone yet either, so we're just focusing on some sims for the first half of the month. You can see Izquierdo actually gave Brighton the lead, but thankfully for us, Nabil Fekir actually equalised. It looks as if it might well be yet another disappointing draw though, at the hands of mid-table opposition and indeed it is. 1-1, two points dropped there for sure, away from home against Brighton. Into training and Joe Gomez has gone up from a 79 to an 80 that might well help us defensively he's now gone up by four since the start of the season but finally on to some transfer activity we've got some bids for a couple of players that are certainly surplus to our requirements uh, Jordan Henderson has been hardly used in this series so far I am obviously a Liverpool fan and Jordan Henderson is someone that I like as a player because I know he has a lot of passion for the club but in terms of ability he's not he's not there and he's not there on this game either so I'm happy to sell him especially Especially with the amount of central midfield depth that we have in this side, even after selling Lana and Vinaldum in the summer. Divock Origi, despite that brace earlier on against Wigan, is also a fairly expendable player, especially if we're going to be bringing in a very good player to replace Bobby Firmino and potentially someone better than Firmino himself. Now, this is, however, something I did not plan for. You can see we've agreed on Henderson and Origi's deals at the bottom. We've actually had a release clause paid by not one but two teams. Bayern Munich and Manchester City have paid the £25.6 million release clause that is part of Trent Alexander-Arnold's contract. I didn't even realise he had a release clause, so it just shows you've got to be careful. You've got to check these things because I didn't realise he even had a release clause. I would have offered him a new contract without one if I'd have actually known that information. You can see Man City have also paid it. Clearly, he is worth more than £25.6 million. Pounds. So the AI are coming in with, um, you know, wanting to steal him for an absolute bargain. We get no say in the matter because the release clause means he can talk to the club directly. And Trent Alexander-Arnold decides to join Manchester City, which is even worse because it's another team in our league. At least if he'd gone to Bayern, we probably wouldn't have to face them during the course of the entire series, apart from maybe in the Champions League. But in the Premier League, we're just now helping one of our other opposition in the league and chasing the league title. Thankfully for us, as far as our club is concerned, we've got quite a lot of depth in that position. Benjamin Pavard and Joe Gomez are usually being utilised as centre-backs in this series, but both of them can play as right-backs, and Pavard is 81 rated. That's only one below what Trent Alexander-Arnold was at the point of being sold, and on top of that, we've obviously got the depth of Joe Gomez and Aaron Wan-Bissaka, so in my opinion, we don't actually need to bring in another right-back to replace him. I know it sounds stupid, we've got Benjamin Pavard and Joe Gomez, who are both growing quite well and growing quite quickly in training. I just don't see the point in bringing in another right-back just purely because we've sold Alexander-Arnold. 
Arnold. It's a shame because he's a player I really like in real life and on the game. I didn't want to sell him, but obviously you have no say in the matter when it comes to the release clauses. One thing we do have to do though is bring in a new striker and we're going all guns blazing on this one. Luis Suarez is the first option, bringing back the Uruguayan to Anfield. And one thing we can do is offer Bobby Firmino in return. Despite the fact he's actually out injured for four months, the game is quite happy to let me use him as a trade deal or in exchange for Luis Suarez. Unfortunately for us though, Barcelona don't want Firmino and we don't really have anyone else who's worth enough uh, to be able to trade with, trade for, sorry, Suarez and be able to afford it. So Firmino is really the only person we can use in these negotiations. So we had to back out of that one. Luis Suarez is off the table. Atletico Madrid at first wanted £91.8 million pounds plus Firmino for this man here, Antoine Griezmann, who would be a big upgrade, actually, on Firmino. Uh, Firmino himself was only 87 rated, whereas Griezmann is 90. We uh, counted to go for £44 million, pounds, but as you can see at the top of the screen, that would still leave us in the red as far as a transfer budget is concerned. So we really need to try and negotiate this one and drop it down quite substantially. We go for £46.5 million, pounds, and once again, Simeone is not budging. Our final offer is to go £1 million higher, £47 and a half million pounds is literally what we can afford and Diego Simeone thankfully decides you know what I've had enough of these negotiations now just have him we don't even care anymore so it looks as if that deal could be on the table but it would be a good idea to sell someone first because I don't think we could afford any sort of bonuses from Griezmann at this point in time or if he wanted any sort of wage increase we couldn't afford him. The second option is this man here, Sergio Aguero. I came to do an exchange player deal and obviously because we used Firmino in the deal for Griezmann we can't actually access him for this one so we've had to put forward Divock Origi which is annoying because at the moment he looks as if he's on his way to Milan because we accepted a bid for him earlier on in the episode. We can still try and use him just in case as a backup option. Aguero is worth a lot less because he's 30 years of age and he's also 88 overall, so significantly less than Griezmann. Uh, Pep Guardiola wanting £52.2 million, first of all, along with Origi. We're going to try and drop that one down closer towards £40 million, so 40.1 in total. And surprisingly, Pep Guardiola is fine to accept that. I think you'd find if Liverpool offered 40 mil plus Divock Origi in real life, Guardiola would be very happy to turn that one down. So that's two deals on the table. One of them a little bit more questionable than the other because if Origi decides to go to Milan, the Sergio Aguero deal can't happen. However, we would then get enough money to be able to afford Antoine Griezmann. So I guess it's a bit of a win-win situation in a sense. Before we find out the fate of our new number nine, it's time to go into another sim game and it's well into its duration actually. We're two goals up thanks to Mo Salah. Old Liverpool player Christian Benteke manages to get one back, does the former Liverpool man. But Nabil Fekir restores our two-goal lead and we win the game 3-1. And what I was talking about earlier did in fact happen. Divock Origi decided that he wanted to go to Milan in a £17.7 .7 million deal. We got £14.5 million of that, but because Origi was involved in the Aguero deal, we can't do that and that negotiation is absolutely done. Those negotiations are over. So Aguero isn't an option, Luis Suarez isn't an option, and that means only one thing. We're going to have to go in for this man here, Antoine Griezmann. We've agreed a fee with Atletico, who we obviously faced in the group stages, and we actually faced Antoine Griezmann. He even scored a penalty against us earlier on in the series. It's now time to try and bring him to Anfield. The 90 rated Frenchman could be our biggest signing of this entire series and naturally he's going to have a crucial squad role. Three year contract length is what Antoine Griezmann is wanting. We'll put forward a wage of 170k, a signing bonus of 3.3 million pounds but Antoine actually wants an appearance bonus on top of that of 3.7 million pounds if he plays 15 games. We're going to have to drop that down because we, I mean, we can afford it, but ideally I don't want to waste my entire budget here if I'm going to be honest with you because I probably want to do maybe one, maybe even two more signings before the end of the window. But thankfully, Antoine Griezmann is okay with that change and he becomes our first signing of the January transfer window. And what a signing it is. Look at his attributes here. His physicals and mentals page are absolutely insane apart from his strength, which is a little bit lacking, but I think it's made up for by that technicals page. Absolutely absolutely 
disgusting some of the stats on Antoine Griezmann. I am really looking forward to using him. He won't be number 19, as is what was on his shorts just then. I, will, I did change the number to number 9 just after that piece of gameplay. As you can see, on top of that, Jordan Henderson has now been sold. We agreed a fee with Leverkusen much earlier on in the episode, and finally Henderson has now agreed on personal terms. We get £15.5 million, pounds, and that sees us now jump on to 19.5 as a total budget right now, which is pretty decent, and we can now reinvest that into some other players. And I think we need to bring in a backup left back at some point, because we only have Andrew Robertson in that position, and James Milner, who can also play there. Uh, in the squad at the moment. Back into FA Cup activity, we'll, we'll, we'll finish off the transfer stuff a little bit later on. We're going to sim some games first. We're away from home against Millwall at the Den. Zygankov has given us the lead, yet another goal for him in a sim. He's been a very good player actually in this series. Tunnicliffe though has actually equalised for Millwall. Little injury there for Aaron Wan-Bissaka. Hopefully that isn't too serious for the youngster, but it looks as if this might well be forced to a replay, and indeed it is. It's only a draw against Millwall in the FA Cup, so we'll be forced to play a replay later on in this episode. Back to league activity, and we're now facing Leicester City in this one. A red card early on for Andrew Robertson is not great, but a goal on his debut for Antoine Griezmann really does make up for it. Mo Salah then grabs himself a goal for minutes after Sadio Mane got injured. Hopefully, yet again, that isn't too much of a serious injury. And Robertson, though, with the red card, means he will be out of the next game. Some quick-fire goals for Griezmann again, and now Pedraza as well for Leicester, mean the game ends 3-1. But two goals on his full debut for Antoine Griezmann is exactly what we were hoping for. Thankfully, the injuries to both Aaron Wambasaka and Sadio Mane are only one week each, so they'll only miss one game apiece. Back to transfer activity, though, and as I mentioned earlier, we do probably need to bring in another left-back. Highlighted even more by the fact that Robertson then got suspended in the next game. Uh, James Milner would have been the only player we could have brought in and he's not actually traditionally a left back even though he played there for a lot of last season. Alexander Sinchenko is someone that we could bring in. The Ukrainian is quite cheap but he's got a release clause of £5.9 million. We did activate that though in theory and in hindsight we probably could have got him for a bit cheaper. We probably could have got that for more like four or three and a half million pounds if we'd actually negotiated. But realistically I knew we'd be able to afford the Ukrainian uh, coming in from the, uh, from the reigning champions Manchester the city so we go ahead and jump into negotiations with him a four-year contract is what he's wanting rotation squad role and 41k in wages along with a 370k signing bonus we decide to remove the additional bonus for appearances and then bump up his wages which we've done quite a lot with different players during the course of this series it works a treat and Zinchenko comes in as a backup player much like Aaron wan -Bissaka. as you can see once again there and Robertson with that red card that at least means that if really required we can bring in Zinchenko but to be honest with you, the more I think about it, the more I kind of want someone else who can play in that role as well. And this man here, Ryan Sessegnon, is a very obvious signing. He's a very bait signing. I tend not to do these sorts of signings very often. But you know what? Sack it off. I'm here to enjoy myself. And Ryan Sessegnon is a player that I would love to see at Liverpool myself. So even though we've just brought in Zinchenko, it's time to bring in another backup winger. But also someone who, if needs be, can play at left back as well. He's also higher rated than Zinchenko. So we can always rely on him a little bit sooner. His current value is £11 million, but my chief executive record we could get him for between 8 and 12 for some reason, so I don't know if he's going into the final year of his contract, but we can actually get him for cheaper. We put in an initial offer of £10 million. The Fulham uh, manager only wants an 8% sell-on clause on top of the original £10 million transfer sum, so we're going to go ahead and accept that. We can afford that. We have £13.2 million as a transfer budget right now, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to agree a fee there for Ryan Sessler. So now we jump into the contract negotiations. A sporadic squad role is what Sessegnon is hoping for, and that will probably be granted to him. He's 18 years old, obviously, and 76 rated, so a real high prospect in this career mode and on FIFA 19, generally speaking. Four-year contract length is what Ryan is wanting. No release clause. And in terms of his wage demands, we're looking at 47k with a signing bonus of 420 grand and an appearance bonus of 220 grand if he achieves five appearances. That will happen but it's affordable so I'm going to go ahead 
ahead and accept that offer straight away. We're not planning to bring in anyone else and we could afford all of those bonuses and that wage as well, so we might as well just accept it rather than haggling unnecessarily. So Ryan Sessegnon becomes our third and final signing of the January transfer window and our ninth signing overall in the career mode save. The Englishman who can play as a winger and a left back, very pacey, good agility and balance as well and there you can see some of the rest of his stats, decent short passing, good finishing and as you would expect from someone who scored 16 goals in real life last season for Fulham in the Champions He's very high rated and he's going to be a very good backup player hopefully in this series. As you can see though it is now time to jump in to the FA Cup replay against Millwall. Uh, this will be the final action of this episode now the transfer window is done. We should really have won the away game here but we've now at least got a replay at, uh, at Anfield and we should make short work of Millwall and so far we are. Three goals in the first half there shared between Pavard, Auer and Daniel Sturridge. Another goal for Victor Zygankov in the 61st minute who's really looking very prolific in Sims at the moment. He grabs yet another to make it 5-0 and it's two goals for him. That's now five I think for him across the season and it is an emphatic win. Unfortunately for us though, uh, James Milner uh, actually suffers a knee injury in that game and he's now out for two months so we won't be seeing James Milner for quite some time and once again it reinforces just how much we needed some depth in that left back position with Robertson being the only man who could play there traditionally and now James Milner out injured we do really need to rely on Sessegnon and Alexander Zinchenko for depth in that position. That though is going to round up today's episode of the Liverpool career mode here on FIFA 19. Hope you guys have enjoyed it and are enjoying the series so far. If you've liked this episode then feel free to smash the like button and and if you enjoyed the entire series and you want to see more of it, then feel free to subscribe. It's that big red button under the video and it massively, massively helps me out. It's been a pleasure ranting at you guys though today. Have a great day, enjoy yourselves and goodbye.